What's up, what's up? Hello, everybody. As a yoga teacher and human performance coach, it's my mission to help people unlock their highest potential and from an overflow of their own deep self-worth, boldly share their gifts with the world. When I was asked by UNLV what revolutionary idea I wanted to share with you all today, it was simple. It's that the greatest gift that you could ever give yourself is your own self-love. Show of hands, how many of you all at one time or another have felt like you're not good enough? I know I have. See, billions of dollars are made each year by convincing you that you are inferior. From the time we are children, we are told again and again that we are not enough. Our worth placed on an endless treadmill to nowhere that leaves us all sick, tired, lonely, and empty. The revolution that we are all looking for is not an outer revolution. It's an inner revolution. It's a homecoming where we begin to love ourselves unconditionally where we see ourselves as we truly are, which is whole, complete, and imperfectly beautiful. Andrew Bennett said that the longest journey that you'll ever go on is the 18 inches from the head to the heart. My journey started off on the east side of Las Vegas, far away from the glitz, the glamour, and the famous neon lights that Las Vegas is known for. My journey started off on the streets, in the projects, in a single parent household where every day, me, my mom, and my little sister fought for survival. Where addicts jab needles into their arms, and young boys like me grew up in fatherless homes. My mom was a beautiful white woman who, in a fling of passion, had a baby with a beautiful black man, and I was born. And when you mix white and you mix black, you get brown. So as a brown kid growing up in the projects with a white mom, you never feel like you really fit in. You're definitely too dark to be white but sometimes you're too light to be black, so you fall into this in-between space and you get picked on because you're not like the rest. My mother had one rule for me, though. She said, no matter what anybody tells you, Brandon, you tell them that if they have a problem, they have to talk to your mom. So FYI, if any of y'all got a problem with me, <laughs> you gotta talk to my mom. See, my mother was a mama bear, and shout out to all the single mothers out there, but she knew she had to protect me from a world that would slowly and methodically try to kill my light. The pull of the streets is strong though, and by the time I was 16 years old, I was a high school dropout, addicted to alcohol, and caught up in street life. Slowly, my innocence was replaced with hardness, and like many of my friends, I was headed to two places, either dead or in jail. For two years, I spiraled downward, and at my lowest, I found myself sitting at a bus stop. It was there that I made a decision that I was going to change my life. If I was going to die on the streets, I was going to at least try to do something to get out. I wanted to prove to the world that I could be someone. I wanted to prove to the world that I could be worth something. I wanted to prove the haters, the doubters, the non-believers wrong, that I was more than a statistic, that I was more than a skin, my skin color, that I deserved to be seen and I deserved to take up space. And with the chip on my shoulder, I went on a 14-year journey to prove to the world that I was valuable. I became the first in my family to go to college, eventually going to UNLV and getting my bachelor's degree at this very institution, Go Rebels. <laughs> After that, I went to the Ivy Leagues and got my master's in psychology from the University of Pennsylvania. I became a successful entrepreneur and began to train, work, and practice with some of the best in the world all over the world. The accolades began to flow in, and I became one of the only trainers in the world signed globally to Nike. And the little boy in me wanted to scream out, look at me. I'm valuable now. I'm worth something now. For 14 years, I grinded. And then one day, as I sat on the balcony of my Las Vegas high-rise penthouse that looked out towards the streets that once enslaved me, I had a jarring realization. I didn't feel any different than when I was on the streets. I still didn't love myself. I still felt worthless. I still felt like I was empty inside. But, but I thought if you, you got the accolades and you got the success and you got the money, you were supposed to feel different. Everything had changed on the outside, but on the inside, I still felt the same. Two months later, I took a trip to Bali, Indonesia. I walked into a yoga class. And after the yoga class, the yoga teacher came up to me and said, Brandon, you got it all figured out on the outside, but on the inside, you have no idea what's going on. 
And until your worth and value come from within, you will always be empty. Shortly after that, I walked away from my old life, moved to Southeast Asia, and became a yoga teacher. All those years I'd focused on winning the outer game only to realize that the only way to win the outer game is to win the inner game. And since then, it's been my vow to love myself just for being me. Do I fall short at times? Absolutely, every day. But my life has changed as a result of that. All the great teachings point us back to ourselves, whether it's yoga, martial arts, meditation, or prayer. We're told to go inside, to tune out the chatter of the mind, tune into the heart, and from there, fall in love with what it is we are. In the yoga traditions, we speak of a concept called ahimsa. Ahimsa means compassion or nonviolence. For a lot of us, it's easy to extend compassion outward, but it's really hard to extend that same compassion towards ourselves. In fact, for many of us, if our friends spoke to us the way we speak to ourselves, we probably wouldn't be friends with them anymore. Our bodies are always listening, and what we say about ourselves, what we think about ourselves, what we believe about ourselves matters. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter how much success you achieve. It doesn't matter how many accolades you get. It doesn't matter how much money's in your bank account. If you don't love yourself, you will always be empty. True self-love is unconditional. It's an opportunity to celebrate all parts of yourself, even the parts of you that nobody celebrates. And these are some important questions to ask yourself. Can I love the parts of me that nobody celebrates? Can I love the parts of me that I deem most unlovable? Can I love myself like there is nothing to fix? Your wounds, your pain, your failure, your shadows, they deserve your love too. And this is not about bypassing. This is not about not changing some of the things that need to be changed. This is about remembering that self-hate and self-love cannot live at the same time. This is an opportunity to radically love yourself nourish yourself and express yourself unforgivingly. And I say radical self-love because when our lives are built off the foundation of I am more than enough and I choose to treat myself that way, everything changes. So how do we cultivate self-love in a world that pushes us towards so much self-hate? Here are six codes I've learned about self-love on my journey from the streets to the skies. First, Self-love says nobody is you, that is your power. You've been gifted one of the most miraculous things in the entire universe, human life. But more importantly than that, it's your human life and who you are and what you are is sacred. One in infinity, never has been, never will be again another you. Self-love says own who you are, all of you. The world doesn't need any more clones. The world doesn't need any more fake. The world doesn't need any more artificial. The world needs you to be you. When we celebrate what it is we are, we create the space for our gifts, our talents, our strengths to come to life in the most beautiful way possible. Self-love says treat yourself like you are valuable. A couple years ago, my therapist asked me, Brandon, do you see yourself as valuable? And after so many years of doing the deep work, the answer was finally yes. Self-love is a byproduct of self-worth. When we inherently see ourselves as valuable, we begin to treat ourselves a whole lot better, and this inner love radiates outward. When working with clients, more importantly than getting them to start a workout routine or begin a meditation practice, the real goal is to get them to treat themselves like they are worth something. When we're standing in self-worth, a new standard is set, and it ripples outward into every part of our life from the nourishment that we put into our bodies, to the personal boundaries that we set for ourselves, to the relationships we choose or choose not to be in, to the career or educational paths we choose or choose not to take, these all change for the better when we're standing in our worth. Self-love says, stop comparing yourself to other people. It's easy to go on social media, on the gram, and all of a sudden be hit with an endless highlight reel of other people's lives. And if not careful, we get lost in what we are not rather than what we are. Growing up in the streets, one of the ways I dealt with poverty was comic books. And my favorite comic book series was the X-Men. 
And what I loved most about the X-Men was that they were these ordinary individuals with extraordinary powers. And what made them powerful was not their similarities, it was their differences. And the more they focused on their differences, their uniqueness, their magic, the more powerful they became. Comparison kills our gifts. Comparison kills our magic. Comparison kills our confidence. And this might seem counterintuitive in this achievement culture that we live in, but when we compare ourselves to others, we discredit all that we are. When we stop comparing ourselves to others, we create space for authenticity to flow. And authenticity, my friends, is the most powerful filter you can wear. It invites the right people in and keeps the wrong people out. It invites the right opportunities in and keeps the wrong opportunities out. And most importantly, it's sustainable because it's you. Self-love says give yourself permission to be messy. For a star to be born, a gaseous nebulous must collapse. So collapse, crumble. This is not your ending. This is your beginning. It's a quote by Zoe Schuyler. Life is not supposed to be sterile and squeaky clean. Life is messy. Art is messy. Sex is messy. Birth is messy. Mistakes, slip-ups, failures. This is how we learn. This is how we grow. They say in school, a lesson is taught and then a test is given. Well, in life, oftentimes a test is given that inevitably teaches us a lesson. I'm here to tell you that it's in the mess where you bring to life your most powerful message. I'm here to tell you that it's in your mess where oftentimes you find the building blocks to build your most potent masterpiece. Throw out the idea of perfection, perfect doesn't exist, and give yourself the grace, space, and freedom to just be human. Self-love says you are always on time. A few years ago, I was going through a breakup, super heartbroken, so I decided to call up my mentor, Mr. Mahalan, a.k.a. Morpheus, and as soon as he picked up, I began to tell him how I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it through this breakup and how I was so sad, and in the middle of me speaking, he cuts me off and goes, Brandon, have you ever tasted an orange? He then went on to say, isn't it amazing that you take this seed, you plant it beneath the dirt, the seed sprouts, it pushes through the ground, it begins to grow, somehow survives the seasons, grows into this tree, this tree grows branches, branches grow leaves, and this perfect fruit is created. He then said, do you not think that the same intelligence that is behind the orange tree is also behind you? Just like the orange tree, we are all in a process of blossoming and of becoming. The orange tree doesn't look at its former self negatively. It knows that the entire journey from seed to fruit was necessary. It's easy for us to get caught up in one day. I can love myself, be myself, express myself when I become, rather than I can love myself, be myself, and express myself now knowing that just like the orange tree, that just like everything in nature, you are right on time. This allows for us to begin to enjoy the journey and love ourselves right where we are. Lastly, self-love says all love starts on the inside. In yoga, we often speak about not seeing the world as it is, but seeing the world as we are. What we cultivate in our inner world emanates to our outer world, our outer experience being a mirror of our inner vibration. Gandhi didn't say, change the world. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. So if you want more peace, be more peaceful. If you want more truth, be more honest. If you want more compassion, be more kind. And if you want more love, be more love. Self-love opens up the doors towards infinite possibilities where our limits are transformed into limitlessness and our prisons are transformed into prisms of possibility. My mother passed away four months ago, my beautiful mother who I spoke about earlier, and one of the last gifts she gave me was a keychain. And on the keychain it said, it says, you are the gift. And so I wanted to share her words with you all as well today. The keychain didn't say that your bank account's the gift. The keychain didn't say your body fat's the gift. The keychain definitely didn't say your accolades are the gift. The keychain said you are the gift. A gift to your friends, a gift to your family, a gift to your communities, 
and a gift to this world. And your self-love is how you pay homage to the gift that you are each and every day. So shine bright and remember that the world is a better place just because you exist. Thank you and namaste.